SDP, the Steve Dangle Podcast, with your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Hey, let's give a round of applause to Shaw Communications. Shaw Communications. All right. My new favorite Western Canadian telecom, Shaw, brought to you by Rogers. They Shaw have it here, too. It's great. Well, Adam, if you want to talk about it, let's talk about it. Let's 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 do it. How about that? Huh? How about that? You want to talk about it? Let's talk about it. No, I just want to congratulate you. I'm surprised that you or Elliot Freeman and Chris Johnson didn't break the news about the big signing. But, Imagine uh, Elliot tweets it as a Elliot breaking tweet. headline. It's in 31 oh. thoughts. Yes, yes. I get the 28th thought. He just buries it. Elliot, hey, could you uh, break this? Uh, no. Like <laughs> I could just I could just see it being as simple as that. Steve. No, Adam, tell- why would you turn it off for? No, okay, you want to back, <laughs> back, right? turn it back on? Okay, I think it's very back. It might get a little confusing. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Steve. yeah, maybe take it off. You talk to Elliot uh more than Adam and I. Hmm. Does he know how he how powerful he is in hockey media and how like one tweet he sends out can shift the entire conversation of the hockey world? That's interesting. Um, he is very, I know he's very aware of getting radioed. Um, cause like he, which explain ra- that to people, explain that to me. He, he does these radio appearances and he says things and then people will quote him and they'll tweet them out. But the problem is the quotes have not always been accurate. And now it's like become a meme. I want to say it was started because of a Habs account. Like people will just tweet out real looking fake quotes and it'll be like oh quinn hughes was quoted as saying matthews most overrated player in the league leafs ain't shit (laughs) 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 and sorry that's that's unrelated from elliot it's just it's but so you imagine saying that though (laughs) oh i know oh man leafs ain't shit i met quinn hughes no i cannot imagine him saying that (laughs) oh my god that or a sentence longer than three words like he's just he seemed pretty shy when i met him but i think he was a rookie or a sophomore or whatever um he he's aware of his power, but I don't know to what extent because he is also rather humble. Yeah, if, if that makes sense. But he's yeah, yeah. he's he's careful with his words. Man, yeah. I mean, um, he uh, <laughs> he is very very careful, and I I I still want to know. And Steve, I think did you mention this on the show? Why sure. he had to be so quiet about the Grandland stuff? He was the first guy to start talking about the Leafs being linked to Michael Granlin. And he was like, well, I don't want to say it. I don't want to write it. I'm going to write it down on a piece of paper, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that was his paper name. It, yeah, and then it all of a sudden became Granlin, and everybody's out with Granlin. And uh, and I just wanted to, know, I wanted to know why he felt uncomfortable coming out with that name. Because you brought that up either on the podcast or we were talking, getting ready for the show. And I was like, you're right. Like, it's just... Michael Granlin, like, who cares, right? Oh, we it's, talked about that on the show. We mm-hmm. did, right? Wait a sec, yeah, that yeah. was your name? Because we immediately were like, he doesn't want to say the name? Taylor Hall. Right. 100% right. Taylor Hall. Wayne Gretzky. He's, he's back. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know why that's what he chose to go with, but I don't know. He Listen, he's far more successful than me. I have – I've known a small handful of things ever – before they've been b- before they've been released basically before it's been news and i've i don't think i've ever tweeted one of them like that justin bieber video <laughs> oh f- <laughs> <laughs> with the scoop of the steve, century steve steve knew yeah now steve didn't tell us steve told us after but he told us mm-hmm. about Hey guys, there's a thing out that you should probably know about because you're gonna be talking about it on Virgin Radio tomorrow. So we're like, what is didn't, it? we didn't even talk about it. <laughs> I it went Justin by Bieber, without anybody caring. <laughs> I thought Justin Bieber wrote a song about the Leafs. That was the impression I was given. Right. And immediately I'm like, all right, this is gonna be terrible. So <laughs> I was just batting down the hatches i'm like okay everyone online is going to be dunking on this it's going to start in sports twitter and then it's going to make its way it's going to be on tmz and then adam's going to have to talk about it on virgin and they're going to bring jesse on for his this song is terrible segment and it's just going to be this huge thing nope 
just leaves highlights over a pre-existing song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did I have the scoop? Yes, of nothing. A big scoop of shit is what Whoever I have. Whoever gave you the scoop, you should be upset at them. Yeah. Like, they were upset at themselves. Were they? Yes. Okay. Well, and we, we Jesse and I were like, <laughs> this is probably, we, before we saw it, Jesse and I were like, this must be a big deal. Yeah. Because if he's messaging us, maybe Steve's in a Justin Bieber video. And I was like, that would be sick. Even would when it came out, I watched the whole thing because I was like, oh, if they're just super cutting different like Leafs moments and maybe some fan content. I was like, maybe Steve like slipped in there. I was like, hey, one of these jump cuts of a fan reacting, you know? And I thought Steve might have been in it and it was just nothing. It was just- now, if you think we're crazy, <laughs> if you think we're crazy, Steve showed up in Carolina Hurricane sizzle yeah. reels, and Dallas yeah. Stars sizzle reels. Yep. Being Attack. wrong, being wrong. Okay. Being wrong, oh, being wrong. Vegas yeah. also being wrong. Mm-hmm. Vegas there yep. you go yeah, and you've so, hosted like the tailgate party like there's legitimate reason to believe you could be in the video right. i was in the blueprint yeah there you go <laughs> but, at least once but you, you but steve so steve sends the link to our facebook group just so excited about this justin bieber thing and jesse's like hey steve i think you oversold that a little bit yeah <laughs> and steve knew the second he watched it well, because I'm watching it with SL. I'm watching it with my wife, and she's like, oh, I like this song. And I'm like, oh, this song's already out? Yes. And also appears to be about love and not the Toronto Maple Leafs? Yeah. Like, it talking already about- has its own music video. It's not even like this was the official music video. It already had one. You know, it was just somebody made a highlight reel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. It's, it's an extended great. TikTok. Like it was, <laughs> uh, I was very, I mean, good for Justin on not writing a song about the Toronto Maple Leafs specifically, because I, I don't did, know how well that would have gone. I did get internet angry and call Steve that day though, Jesse, uh, because mm-hmm. um, I just, just these, geez, these, these gr- grumpy old people on, uh, on oh. Twitter just mad that Justin Bieber would dare like the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like it's who was, just, who was upset. Oh, there were some people that were tweeting some things and I, and I was like, and I actually tweeted them like, did Justin Bieber hurt you guys? Like right. you realize about- he's just like you and grew up in Ontario as a Leafs fan. Is there anything a- you guys have more in common than you would think? Yes. <laughs> and, and also like you don't have, to, if you don't have to consume it, if you don't like it, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, there's this other, th- there's this stuff on the internet called everything else. And you're allowed to consume that. It's crazy. No. It, also, but, hating Justin Bieber is that's that you missed the boat on hating Justin Bieber. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Like, do you have a Harambe meme you'd like to send me as well? Like, <laughs> how many years ago was right. this? This doesn't need to be a Exciting thing anymore. Kid. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy for sure. Justin Bieber. That's who all the kids love. All the millennials. All the 17 year old millennials. Which don't exist anymore. Which by the don't way. exist are not a thing. It's no, it's no longer our world. We're living in a Gen Z world. Get used to it. Yeah, man. I watched the Britney Spears documentary finally. Oh, really isn't good. it great? Yeah. Okay, it makes me feel like I grew up in the forties. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I vividly remember all of that, and I remember watching like older media, like older movies, older TV shows, in like school or at home and and whatever, and being like, gosh the world used to be a less tolerant and awful place. And then I watched stuff from 2007 and I'm like, we are humans were a mistake. We're, we're vile. We're horrible people. All of us. I thought the South park episode about Britney Spears was like cartoonizing basically what happened to her no it's just no. an accurate depiction of what literally, happened yeah, literally what happened yeah. they were doing framing britney spears back then you know yeah were, yes saying like hey this is what's happening you guys are pummeling her the media is and she's gonna go crazy and this was happening yeah man it's uh, man it's okay a challenging watch so, it is a it's yeah. you'll feel bad i started my internship my first internship um in january of 2007 that's when i started in radio And so that Britney Spears incident where she shaved her head and that whole lead up to it was sort of the 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 arc of the big entertainment story that we were talking about every single night. Um, So I was helping out like with prep and that sort of thing. And I remember I started to like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but I was writing like jokes or whatever about it. And the host at the time and full marks to to Corey for this. 
Corey, uh, Corey Kim, he works in Edmonton now, I think it up. And, uh, he's a, he's a pretty great broadcaster and he was a great mentor to me. And he said to me, listen, I don't, he's like, I don't think you know any better. And he's like, but you don't make fun of people in this situation. And it was because everybody was like, you remember, like I had to read, you know, Perez Hilton and TMZ and just Jared and D list and all these websites that we were like getting the, they were not even really websites. They were just sort of people's blogs that they were writing literally in their basement before these bloggers were making huge money. And uh, I remember all of them, all of them made fun of her and all the news outlets and like Matt Lauer is asking her if she's a good father or a good mother and whatever, whatever. And you just Matt you, Lauer, by Matt Lauer, Matt like Matt Lauer. <laughs> And, took, and, and yeah. so that's a tough so Google full days. marks to, to Corey Kim uh, at the time for being like, Hey, uh, no. Um, and he never, I don't think he ever did make fun of her on the show. And it was pretty incredible. And like, cause everybody else was, and you didn't, we just didn't know at that time. Right. We just, I, I don't, I mean, I was 18 years old. I didn't know any better. One should have late night guy. One late night guy had it right. Craig Ferguson. Yes. Mm -hmm. That rant is incredible. Um, the other thing is about that documentary that I found interesting is Justin Timberlake's in for 30 seconds and he is the most hateable character in the entire thing. <laughs> it's crazy. No one looks good. Yeah. No I hated, one. I hated Justin and especially the, um, the paparazzi guy who, who was there at the time chasing down Brittany. And I think she, what does she do? She smashes his car or something, but he goats her into doing that. Yes. And, then, and then he's sitting there doing the interview and he's like, you know, she got a lot from us and we, we got a lot from her. And I was like, no, she didn't. No. What did she yeah, get from you? He's wealthy because of her. Oh because yeah. Of literally harassing her. He's wealthy. Yeah. Yeah. He's like selling her he, worst a lot of money for a picture of her, you know, and I got I, I got to feed my family. I was like, go work somewhere else. You can feed your family otherwise. No, thing, Jesse, but you just kind of get sucked in. At the time, oh. too, there was, Put a like, this shit. was it was totally acceptable to take up shirt Scott, uh, shots of women oh. if you were paparazzi. So there used to be like oh get, tabloids yes, that would print them, but then about. there'd be like a big star in front of it, like whoa, didn't whoa. wear underwear, and and there's like laws against shooting people upskirt at their crotch. Yet for paparazzi, it was somehow okay. It's a bizarre. There's so many layers to that documentary. I gotta go back and watch it again because it was so bad. But and so it feels good. like Mad Men. Yes, like it. Oh, check out the dame getting out of the car. And no, that was frigging like 12 13 years ago yeah it's a it's amazing almost everybody listening to this remembers it yeah well i wouldn't say it's that. coming up on like 20 years so yeah that's like, 2007 yeah it's oh the dawn up. of britney spears yeah 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 like mm -hmm. it's coming up it's probably over that now but like i was i was comparing it to like uh daryl sutter's back as coach of calgary and like when he was there it was 2004 in Three in what two and a half years? That's gonna be twenty years ago. He went to the Stanley Cup final with that team, and now he's back again. Like that's a long ass time ago. Oh my god, two decades! Yeah. Wow. I kudos to Jesse for tying that back to hockey. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Good on Jesse. We're back. I'm glad somebody did. <laughs> hey, yeah. do you guys want to do uh, who wore the crown? Hey, fellas, we're in the thick of winter and a storm's brewing. It looks like one to three inches are in the forecast. When you trim that hibernation bush. That's taking place in your pants. Seriously. Luckily, our partners at Manscaped specialize in products to make sure you're walking around town with those beautiful snowballs. Manscaped is here to provide the best tools for your grooming experience, offering precision engineered tools for your family jewels. We're talking about the Lawnmower 3.0 Trimmer, which is the best hygiene tool for the modern man because of their ceramic blade and advanced skin safe technology, your snags on the snowballs will be reduced. The trimmer is also waterproof, so you can trim in the shower. It's a lot easier, right? Manscaped Performance Package is the best buy of 2021. The package comes with a new and improved Lawnmower 3.0, Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Trimmer, Performance Boxer Briefs, which I have and I'm wearing and they're comfortable, and a travel bag to put it all in. You don't have to put your underwear in though. That's okay. 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com. All you have to do is use the code DANGLE, D-A-N-G-L-E. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code DANGLE. Thanks, Manscaped, for making our winter wieners look so good. Britney Spears. Okay, well, <laughs> no, who's the sponsor, Jesse? <laughs> no, it's Britney. Steve, she Steve, does Steve, deserve it. She, she deserves does deserve it. the crown. No, so Britney Spears DM'd me and said she made a donation <laughs> to the kids. 
And uh, she would like to sponsor this episode. Do not make me do this. I, I'm so upset at you. Uh, today's actual sponsor is Eric Myers. So Eric Myers said, if you're still looking for SDP crown sponsors, I recently donated $20 to Sick Kids. I'd be happy to sponsor an episode if that's still a thing. And I said, yes, Eric, you get uh, today's episode. So uh, he, Eric is a Caps fan since 2008. There mm. you go. Mm. Good time. Good time. Adam, guys, Caps take it away. Today's Who Wore the Crown is brought to you by Eric. I only sign on for the good years, Myers, from Washington. Hey, Eric, <laughs> thanks so much for being a Cap fan for only the good years. If you're going to be a fan of a team, why not why only not? the good years? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> what? You know, a lot of Caps fans would not call it that. No. no. What, since 08? It's been the good years. They have no, more- well, now. Now, yes. Oh, come on. Oh, they, they were uh, Adam. Only showed up, man. Every come on. year you don't win the cup is a bad year. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> then this is going to be a Every lot of bad year, years, guys. 30 teams <laughs> suck. Yeah. That's how, <laughs> and that's next how year, work. I promise you 31 teams will suck. Shit. I hadn't thought of it that way. Oh, my well, God. It's because you thought like an idiot. Yes. <laughs> Didn't play sports like to win them, stupid. Yeah. I guess. I guess. Where's Matt Lauer to interview me about my parenting skills? Am I right? Like, yeah, and then gone. press an automatic the button gone. on his door. Yeah, excuse me, Adam. We're going <laughs> to... Oh, that, that is a... Yo, oh. there's a documentary that needs to be made about that man. Did someone that... write a book on him? Catch... Well, sort of. Um, yeah. yeah, the Catch Ronan and Farrell. Kill with Ronan Farrow. Okay. It's, Dude, uh, I haven't read it. I think it's one of... The, like I, th- I feel like it's a book that was intended to be an audiobook. So I listened to the audiobook. It's narrated by him. It's not light. It's not a light listen. But anyway, I'm we sorry. talked about we, it. We on keep this getting show. back to this. We we yes. talked about it on this show, and and we recommended it at the time. Plus, Steve Steve found because Steve got so into it after I read it that Steve mm-hmm. got into the podcast series. Yeah, which which was also very very good. If it hadn't been for Steve, I wouldn't even have known it existed. Um, and that is another one where you go, holy, holy crap. It's, it starts with Harvey Weinstein, but it just, what a tale. It's just unbelievable what was going on. I think uh, Ronan Farrow was up for a Grammy last night, but lost for uh, really? best audio something, like book or whatever that category is. But uh, oh, wow. They didn't win. Yeah. It. But yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's I mean, pretty, it's uh, pretty amazing. Hey, do you think we could get up into a Grammy for audio category. Do they do podcasts? And if they not, should. why don't they? It, it's just every year, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, <laughs> Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan. <laughs> and and in consecutive years, Joe, Joe Rogan, Rogan guest get, owns a feminist. That's a Grammy. Best audio recording. Oh, wow. <laughs> Joe Rogan's guest owns a feminist, but the background's red now. Like, show us He moves to Texas. <laughs> Did he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why how I, little. That's how. That's well, how I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, let, the, who wore the crown? Brought to you by what's his name again? Last Eric. name Myers. Eric. Only here for the good years. Myers, big Caps fan. Uh, Steve, why not start us off? Oh my goodness! Whew. Listen, the prophecy, everyone. Listen, the Leafs are going through some tough times right now. Mm. Leafs have been going through some tough times, but I can tell you they're going to win the cup. I don't know if it's going to be this year or next or the year after, but I can tell you when they do the Stanley cup winning goal. And I'm telling you this quote me on it. Please save this. When the Toronto Maple Leafs finally win the Stanley cup, Mm -hmm. the Stanley cup winning goal will be scored by Zach Hyman. You think so? Absolutely. Yep. Write it in stone. Carve it on – no, don't do that. Tattoo it on your forehead. Can you do an impression of Joe Bowen calling Zach Hyman winning the Stanley Cup? Okay, so here's the thing. Oh, God. It's it's going to sort of come out of nowhere. Um. So, okay, who's – I got to think who's on his line. Okay, he's going to be – he's going to be deeper in the lineup because they will have added by then. He's going to be running the third line. So is it Robertson – Adam, this is this is my I'm fantasy in, scenario. Okay. I'm sorry, no, but I'm just trying to figure out who's on his line. Adam. I'm sorry, Adam, I'm sorry. Adam, get out of the way. I'm sorry, sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. <laughs> sorry, bro. Okay. Thanks. Oh, and there's an injury. So okay. <laughs> Spezza through the neutral zone, coming across the line, hands it off to Robertson. Robertson into the corner, makes a move, throws it to the sky. Zach Hyman! Zach Hyman! The kid from Toronto! Lifelong Lee fan, finally! The prophecy 
prophecy has come true. Steve Dangle was right. Zach Hyman has won the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Stanley Cup. Holy Mackinac, can you believe it? Actual goosebumps. There it is. That Actual scares goosebumps. Me. I turn purple. <laughs> Man, every time I see one of those clips, I'm like, Joe, someone needs to put a pillow behind him. <laughs> okay, because he's screaming at the top of his lungs and he stands up extraordinarily fast. And I'm like, you're going to pass out. I almost passed out today shooting the video. <laughs> there was one There was one where I had to run around and I was screaming while I was running around. And I'm like, whoop, the lights are shutting. Yeah. I'm about to, I'm about to shut off. It's going to be Zach Hyman. I got to interview. I got to interview Joe once when I was doing um, the Toronto Maple Leafs podcast for the Leafs with Sasky. And um, I remember he he was very, very interesting because it was him and his son. And we were talking about some of the stories he remembers. And the thing is, is that he sort of hinted at the fact that because he's seen so many things and he sees every minute of every game ever, and he's been there forever, that there's a lot of stuff that he just doesn't remember. Like you'd be like, hey, do you remember? Do you remember what it was like when Gary Roberts scored in triple overtime? No, no, mm. not really. Like he remembers seasons. Like he remembers it from a thousand feet. Mm. He remembers the entire season, the arc of the season. But he's not going to remember. You, you know, we show up to a game, right? And we're there, and that's our game. We get maybe one of those a year, and you can remember it because you were there. I remember being the last playoff game I saw. Mitch Marner blocked a shot, and the Leafs beat the Boston Bruins. It was incredible. I was there. What too. a what a feeling! Game. What a feeling! I think it was there with Mastercard, and I think you were too, Steve. And, <laughs> I think you're right. And so I, Adam, I was there with you, right? It no, was, I was with somebody else that night. That was a different night. That's when what? the night we were there. Pierre uh, Pierre McGuire was tapping Brad Marchand on the bum during the bench. I don't no, know why. We, all se- you two went together and we went separate um yeah. for game four the game where bergeron wasn't in the lineup and they should have friggin' won yeah 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 so this was i was actually sat back i wasn't at the mm. at the seats right at the ice with the mastercard seats where you're literally right beside zidane Chara and it's scary um mm-hmm. but but um that particular game i remember that i remember being there when gary roberts scored in triple overtime i was lucky enough to be there i remember when the leafs beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in game four and went up three, one in a series in like 1998, 99 or something like that. Cujo's first year. And everybody was singing, uh, singing goodbye to Yarmer Yager and literally singing it in the, uh, in the stands. And I, I think um, Joe looks at it like I don't have a memory bank for that because that's humanly impossible. So he remembers them like slices of cake, like big, you know, big, that's how that, that season felt. And I can remember that. And I, so it was just very interesting because you, you forget that like those big moments are just sort of run of the mill for him. Right. I'll never forget. Um, I saw this documentary while I was in school about like how a football game is made, like how it's produced and directed, oh. what it's like in the truck. And there was some wild finish. It was like some come back off a of fumble and the guy is literally he's standing on his feet like ready one take one ready four take four ready five tight 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 take five ready and he's just losing his mind and afterwards they're all like shaking hands congratulating each other on like a production well done and he's like who won yeah <laughs> and he legitimately yeah. did not know who won the game yeah yeah my yeah. buddy is now uh he's producing jets games Really? No Very happy about it. Yeah, one That's of my uh, groomsmen. He's a Manitoba boy, and he just got just got oh, the gig. So he's for back the three now. letter. Uh, for the three letter, unfortunately, but mm. they they got the regional rights for uh, for the job. B Sports Network. <laughs> uh, is that what the T stands for? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we need to talk about the sports. What, what is the SN? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, since when has anyone ever made V a letter in anything? It is. No, it's not. Now we're both SN. Well, yeah, it's, it would have been. It would have How been. How can any of us? We're both the Rough Riders. <laughs> yeah, you think you think it's like oh Toronto Sports Network, but it's the Sports Network because they were at a time the Sports Network. They, they were the one. That's all there. Was didn't, didn't with, no like, other network existed. Sportsnet. Like oh, that's terrible. That's no, no, no. <laughs> I won't. I won't accept it. I'm never calling them TSN ever again. Well, what are you calling them? The other SN. <laughs> well, the, you would be the other SN, Rogers, because you came. Yeah, second. there would be no room. They're the red one, then. The red SN. Okay, that's fair. Well, but it's so SN. funny <laughs> that Sportsnet logo is blue. Bell's logo is blue. 
Sportsnet's yeah. owned by Rogers, <laughs> and then TSN's red, and and Rogers is red. Funny. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. also. Um, We're both the Rough Riders. I'm good time you. to bring up that ESPN was called the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network. Mm-hmm. The Entertainment and Sports. Yeah, because at one time they used to show like sports movies and stuff on ESPN. They were like half entertainment, half sports. T E S P N. No. Yes. ESPN. Adam, what's it stand for? What? Entertainment and Sports Network? Nope. What's the full name of ESPN? Enter- entertainment and No bullshit. Sports you program. said the. Oh, okay. Sorry. You it, said it actually, the. No, but I, I was wrong. It actually stands for just oh, well, Entertainment you. and Sports Programming Network. Mm-hmm. You ruined it. <laughs> you ruined the bit. So who wore the crown? I said Zach Hyman. It's up to you guys. Uh, I said I the Zach Hyman, actually. <laughs> uh, I'd like to... Ah, TZH. <laughs> TZH. <laughs> TZH, sorry. Um, I mean, okay, this, is, this hasn't been the best week for a Leaf, for like Leaf fans. Um, <laughs> no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to TJ Brody, man. Uh, whatever happens, whether the Leafs are good or bad, TJ Brody's good. Uh, he's never not been good, and he's not Steady. spectacular. He's not uh, anybody that you'd be like, okay, wow, look at him, unless you're like a real, like really paying attention to support plays. But that's where TJ Brody really seems to fit the Leafs so well is that he does the support plays. He does things that make Morgan Riley be a little bit more Morgan Riley, which is great because Morgan Riley hasn't been able to do that. And I think um, – when we, you know, people are talking about the Leafs defense being basically solidified. I don't think they're wrong, but TJ Brody's the piece in that. You know, the emergence of Justin Hall is great. The trade for Jake Muzzin was great, although a lot of people were like, whoa, you gave up a lot. Jersey and Grundstrom. <sighs> looking yeah, like but trade. that's what happens when you're just coming out of an era. I'm sorry, just coming out of an era Thank where. You. You're hoping that every prospect you have is the savior of the franchise. Yes. We which, went from that to immediately playoffs. It was a, it was a rough transition, right? Yeah. So, and we forget, we forget the Leaf fans are used to being, you know, seeing, you know, first round picks traded away and then come back and burning them. Right. Like it's, it's, and Jersey's not bad. It's, it's no. just not, he wasn't going to be Jake Muzzin. The Leafs gave up Renat Valiev and Kirby Reichel in the same trade for Thomas Buchanan's and I could have fainted. I could have. I didn't, but I could have. <laughs> Crazy deal. Crazy deal. So uh, I'm going to give it to TJ Brody, who deserves a little bit more credit for just being steady. And uh, when you're up and you're down, you need somebody who's kind of always steady, always there. I would say uh, uh, TJ Brody as is like one of the best additions the Leafs have made in the last three years. And I'm including that among John Tavares. That's stuff like that, too. Like, I think it's Tavares Brody. Um, because uh, he's just completely changed what the back end looks like. Producer Jesse, not producer Jesse, just Jesse. Thank you. <laughs> Got to stop doing that. Um, the producer Jesse. That's right. Thank you. T- thank you. T- TPJ. Thank you. Yeah, you always have to remember the the. Um, I think I'm gonna give uh, my crown to a guy I may never be able to give it to again. You know, I'm gonna take this opportunity because. It just may never come up again. He got to live the dream from, he's from Barrie, Ontario. He got to live the dream as a Toronto Maple Leaf, a rare right-handed catching goalie, Michael Hutchinson. I, I want to give him the crown because I don't think I'm ever going to be able to give him the crown ever again. Yeah, I don't think he's ever going to play as a starter. So um, two goals on three shots. Here's your crown. Seven seconds apart. Don't let the door hit you on the on the hutch out. Damn, Jesse. <laughs> wow. That is not what I expected it's, out of you, young it was, man. It was such wow. a disappointment. Here's your yeah. crown. Thanks for your service. Good night. He did have a shutout earlier this year. Dude, it's awesome. such a thankless job. It it's is. It's such a he, he was like, the he's the fourth goalie. I think we always forget that. He's the fourth string goalie on the team because it was it's Freddie Anderson, then it was Jack Campbell, then it was Aaron Dell, then it's Michael Hutchinson. So Devils we're, we asked a lot from this four-string goalie, and he couldn't live up to yeah, what we wanted him to be. He's not a backup, so I don't think he should be on an NHL roster. Here, let me let me throw this out there. Aaron Dell has played four professional hockey games this year. He had one uh, overtime game in the AHL where he had an 839 save percentage, and uh, three games in the NHL, he's allowed eight goals, 877. 
Ah, it sounds like we weren't going to be in a great spot no matter what. Maybe Vev Halinen, who we somehow have not gotten to yet, mm-hmm. um, will be the answer in net. Maybe the next guy. <laughs> Maybe next it's this up. next guy. Yeah. I can't wait to see. Well, that is uh, Jesse. What's the name one more time? Eric? Eric. Yeah. Eric Myers. Vev Halinen. <laughs> That's uh, that's uh, who are the crown brought to you by Eric. Only good he- here for the good years, Myers. Uh, if the Caps go into rebuild, Eric won't be there. Uh, so why not? <laughs> the why not? <laughs> TWN. <laughs> TWN. <laughs> the why not? I don't know why that shook you so much. I you never knew the name of the damn channel. <laughs> You worked there, didn't you? you I thought it stood building. for Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Eric, Eric Myers, no offense personally, man. I'm just kidding. Las Hoyas si Cayem. In case you don't speak Spanish, that is Go Leafs Go in Spanish. And I just learned it on Babbel, the number one language learning app. One of my goals for the new year, I was actually to learn a new language and Babbel has made the whole process addictively fun and easy with bite-sized lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. So Babbel's got these 15 minute lessons plans that are I don't know, it's just so much easier than remember sitting in high school and you'd have to conjugate verbs for an hour and you're like, God, I just want to eat lunch. I want to get out of here so bad. That's not what you're getting with Babbel. Babbel designs their courses with practical real world conversations in mind. Things you get to use in everyday life. Things that you can actually apply. Imagine, right? You're going on vacation, hopefully sometime towards the end of this year or early next. Why not use Babbel and learn the language of the place that you're going to? And other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans. Babbel doesn't. They actually used over 100 language experts. It is scientifically proven to be effective. And right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to babbel.com and use the promo code RUN. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com code RUN for an extra three months free. Babbel, language for life. But you were here for the pretty good years. Anybody that's been a Caps fan before that knows exactly what I'm talking about. Those are some rough years, except for that cup win or run in, against Detroit. That was pretty good. That was Don't pretty they have good. the record for worst regular season uh, record of all time in the modern era? That's right. Caps most losses, isn't it? Like- it was like 75 yeah. or something like that. Well, because they used to bring teams in and go, sorry, we're not going to give you any NHL players for five years. Yeah. Go. <laughs> like, what they did to the Sharks, the Senators, the Predators, the Blue Jackets, and then these these fucking Vegas and Seattle are walking in like we're gonna have superstars on the team. Thank you very much, or we're gonna make piles of money. And like I feel bad for Thrasher's fan, just fan, oh. one guy, because and it's Craig Custance, by the way. Craig is the only Thrasher's fan. Um, the remember Craig used to follow the Atlanta Thrashers, or he used to be the guy. Didn't he used to be the guy? Oh, and then know. we we brought him on the podcast and blamed him for them moving. Um, but <laughs> okay, yes. Sorry, I'm like Joe Bowen. I said there's just too many games. So no, I think uh, uh, too many podcasts. Too many it. podcasts. Uh, Craig, uh, listen, look, Craig we do a lot here on TSTPN. <laughs> <laughs> We're just adding letters arbitrarily. Yeah. Those a letter now. Uh, Why does not got a letter? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> i'm sorry guys please don't call tfbi on me <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh uh the I, I i think i think the capitals and the sends um and i think the early blue jackets and predators and and wild and you know thrashers they all deserve a like a redo like there's, there needs to be a, 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 a no. another expansion draft for those teams that got screwed the first time. No, even the Sabers and Canucks got screwed. Well, mostly the Canucks, but this like because remember they they did the draft thing. Jesse, do you know this story about the uh, about Gilbert, Gilbert Perot? What oh, happened? No, he's this can't yeah. miss center in the seventies. Just this guy who's going to be an absolute fucking stud, right? Like a, like an Austin Matthews, not necessarily Connor McDavid level, but amazing. And he's a Buffalo legend. Because for some reason, uh, when they added Buffalo and Vancouver to the league in the 70s, they decided that one of them would get the first overall pick and one of them would get the 10th overall pick. (laughs) Why? Who fucking knows, man? That's just what they did. 
And so they, so Vancouver was like, we're going to pick Gilbert Perot. And the league was like, oh yeah, we told you we were going to get the first overall pick, but you're not, you're now going to get the 10th pick. So thanks for showing up. Gilbert who was Perot. commissioner at the time? Who made uh, that decision? Was it, was it Clarence Campbell or who? What I don't know the who hell? the heck it is. I'm, uh, I'm trying I'd be to look at off. Yo, it, the NHL back in the 70s was like Berkey talks about them in his book about like the, the early 90s. You can only imagine. He said that owners used to yell at each other on conference calls and stuff like that and talk over the commissioner. Um, it was the business of it was just wild back then. Wow. And I'm sure there'd be some really great stories. But um, anyway, long story short, the Canucks got absolutely screwed and were basically an irrelevant team, really until the mid eighties. And I hate to say it, but they sort of were, it's not like, it's not like they didn't make the playoffs. It's not like they didn't, you know, cause there was 21 teams. Of course you made the playoffs, but they didn't become like real, real, real powerhouse players for a long, long time because of that. I, man, this is taking me back. I'm looking at the inaugural roster for the blue jackets and also the thrashers. And do you remember, I remember getting hype in like NHL 99 or whatever the Thrasher's first game was to play them because I was like, okay, I'm going to kill them and I cannot lose because if I do, I'll never forgive myself. Their leading scorer in real life was Andrew Burnett with 50 points. Oh my God. Ray Ferraro was was second with 44. Can I just say Andrew Burnett played on all, all, has played on every single expansion franchise since 1967. Like, I don't know how he managed it, but Andrew Burnett was on every single one of them. Uh, and third was Nelson Emerson with 33. Oh, like, it's just, I'm, oh, yeah. my God. All these names, <laughs> Nat Domenichelli, Nat H-N-A-T. Nat, was, Nat. With the Nat Domenichelli, T-H-N-A-T. <laughs> Nat. Um, man, Johan Garpenlov, Steve Guala. Remember Steve Guala? No, you don't. Um Man, the Blue Jackets, Jeff Sanderson leading score. Espen Knutson finishing Espen second. Knutson, Knutson, just Knutson. It's Knutson. Sorry, <laughs> the card says moops. <laughs> I'm saying moops. It's, uh, boy, boy. Some of these names, like, I'm just trying to go, I'm, I'm trying to go, oh, yeah, these guys, like, threw together three consecutive good seasons. Like, no, none of them. Like, right. before becoming a Blue Jacket or a Thrasher, I mean, the Blue Jackets at least had Jeff Sanderson. <laughs> and boy, that's a sentence I never thought I'd say. I, I do want to correct myself here. I, with apologies to Canucks fans, they did make the finals in 81-82 and lost 0-4 to the Islanders. So I do want to say that. Oh, it's okay, but, Adam. I'm sure they loved being reminded of that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, yeah. Um, also, sense. Oh, no, I wanted to, I wanted to bring this up. No, forget the Leafs. We're an hour in. No, who cares? <laughs> who freaking cares, man? Um, I want to, I want to get this Gilbert Perot thing because I think it's really interesting. The amateur draft. Um, what is it, Adam? The amateur draft. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I can't even find it. One day somebody will text us in with it, but, or tweet us in with that, but it, it's, it's a, just an unbelievable story. And so very NHL. Uh, at that point. So yeah, the Leafs uh, suck and lost to the senators again. Um, I don't know what the fuck do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm like kidding. I'm kidding. I'll, I'll feel, I'll feel a lot less comfortable if uh, a week and a half from now, there's still this garbage. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, they have four, four days off after being exhausted. Then they got a back to back against the flames with a new coach, no idea what to expect from those two games. And then they have another four days off where the season then, you know, goes right back to normal. They basically don't have, I think they have one break of two days or more left in the entire season. Yeah. Like you're going to have to, once the playoffs start, you're going to have to dig deep uh, into that pool of players. I think everybody, that's not just the Leafs. Um, yeah, uh, like I today I sort of took a step back and I was like, okay, they don't look very good. Except, wait a sec, they did kind of kick the Jets up and down the ice for two games mm-hmm. and did not have the better goalie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've been talking about what the Leafs need. Do they need a second line winger? No. Nope. No, they want a second think, line left I, winger. They don't I think need I know where you're going. 
What about a diff? Uh, what about defense? Mm, yeah, I think they could use another one. Yeah. That'd be good. I, I keep saying Ekholm. Like I look at the the core with Ekholm as part of it. Mm-hmm. That's a Stanley Cup caliber uh, caliber decor. I can see. The other team in on Ekholm is the other team they're trying to track or keep off their tails is Winnipeg. Yeah. They, now they're rumored to be also be in on Ekholm, so that's yeah, going to be interesting. Kevin Chevel day off. If given the given the opportunity, we'll do nothing over something, and oftentimes that works out for him. I'm not. I'm not he just kidding. straight away line eh? He did because he had to. Make, to. He's willing to make moves. He made that say. Okay, Kevin Chevel day off is, and I think, and this is full marks to him. He's the most patient general manager in the NHL, in my estimation. This is a guy that. How long did Patrick Line went out of town? It's like three years. Evander Kane, it, like he didn't. I don't think Kev, I don't think Chevy made a trade for the first three years he was GM and then had to trade Evander Kane because Evander Kane just wouldn't play there anymore. Yeah, I think like, he's I think he's grown out of that reputation, but okay. it was well earned. Yes, yes. Anyway, sorry. Continue. Sorry, guys. Um, boy, Jack Campbell better better heal up quick. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. because unless Freddie's got some sort of injury that he's going to get better from this season, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. The Leafs have a top 10 in this league group of skaters. I You throw Connor Hellebuck on the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> They're yeah. steamrolling the division, steamrolling it. Um, I don't know if Freddie's the dude. And so me- everyone's like, oh, just give it to Jack. What the fuck? He's hurt. <laughs> he's not even on the bench right. so the Steve. criticism i have had is he's never been a starter before not only has he not been a starter before he's hurt that can't want, be your solution i want to focus on freddie anderson for a second okay what are you seeing that you don't like the puck uh hitting the back of the nets um no but uh he doesn't what i'm noticing a lot is when freddie is struggling he's scrambly like he's all over the place and on so many goals uh recently like over the six game stretch i'm like who told you that's where the net was Mm -hmm. like he's not in the net his moves are overly powerful like going from one side to the other and then he does this i don't know i'm not a golden coach but he Obviously, when you're pushing, you're pushing from one side to the other, it's this big movement. And then not only is he out of the net, basically with one foot slash a shoulder, then he compresses so tight before pushing back over. Like he's just entirely out of the net now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some players on this team, like when they're not feeling it, they really fight it. Marner's like that. He's has he's had very few games like that this season he's been dialed freddie is all over the damn place and that includes not being in the in the net you know not a not a ton is going through him mm-hmm. but a lot of it's going wide <laughs> i don't i don't he know just, if you had had a chance to read uh myrtle's article on what's wrong with the leafs today in the on the greatest app on earth the athletic app but he put freddie's uh last 74 games into good perspective from like a numbers uh perspective it was in his last 74 games he has a 907 save percentage that's 28 out of 43 goaltenders who have played at least 40 games. If you focus enough. on even strength, then he, he rises to a tie for 23rd. And if you're not a fan of like save percentage, if you want like deeper stats, uh, then you go to goal saved above average. Anderson ranks 29th. And then in um, goal saved above expected, he's 37th. Wow. So it's not good he's enough. just been uh, av- barely average goalie since the last two seasons and yes. he's paid a little above like he's the 12th highest paid goalie in the NHL. So that's a little, you should be better than that from your paycheck perspective. And he hasn't I don't, been. I don't know how they do it, but the Leafs could spend less money on goaltending next season and be better. Um, he's being paid to be better than he is. And like the uniqueness of, uh, you know, the last season in a bit, if he is battling something, He's had an unbelievable amount of time off. And I know that's not really how bodies work. Um, you well, know, it is a little. 
<laughs> but it is a little. What? No, but okay. So if he's not healthy right now, I guess my question is, when is he ever going to be? Mm-hmm. Um, and can you win a Stanley Cup with him? And uh, I mean, I don't know how much more you need to see. I don't know how much more you need to see. Like, like do we not have an incredibly large body of work? All right. Because if it's Anderson? the healthy, if it's the get healthy thing, then from what was it March to December, you played five games. You know, you had you had enough time to get healthy if that was the case. Yes. If I might, gentlemen. Mm, mm, yes. Mm. Hot take. Hot take. Are you ready? Give me. Mm-hmm. Guys, this hot take won't be as hot as I thought it would be because you both seem to agree with me. But I think the least <laughs> oh, number one concern at the trade deadline is getting a goaltender. Yes. You got forwards coming back. You got a strong defense. Yes, you'd like to add your depth on defense. I totally get it. 100% with you on that. Because if Muzzin goes down, Riley goes down, Brody goes down, Hall goes down, you're pretty much pooched. But the number one focus has got to be getting a goalie. And it's not just because you, you're not sure what you're getting in Freddie Anderson. Um, Jack Campbell, when he has played, has played well. And when he played for the garbage Los Angeles Kings a couple of years ago, he played 39, 40 games. Great numbers. Bit of a late bloomer. We love Jack. Don't know, as Steve says, what he can do. But the Leafs have a bit of an issue here with, I think Jack Campbell is what this hinges on. Because if they can't get him back, then you have to make a trade. Freddie might still be your starter, but if Jack's not there, you have to. Right? If Jack is, like, how injured is Jack Campbell? He came back, played great, injured again. How bad is this? And let me say this. Here's the hot take part. If you have to, you move Freddie Anderson at the trade deadline to make the money work. Oh, that's there's nothing hot. There's and, nothing and, hot about it, Adam. And Hold I, to I, the touch. So I, here's <laughs> <laughs> like I don't I don't <laughs> think you gotta I don't think you rule out Freddie Anderson not being here for the playoffs. Now here's where that leaves you open. So I am living in dread at the moment of the Leafs making a trade that uh, we miss on this show. Because why do you uh, think today's the day? By the way, I was weird about that. I didn't understand. So of the, Elliot, uh, the schedule, right? Yeah, Elliot Freeman speculated a few weeks ago, and it's only speculation, but it's smart. Like they have what? I know they have two games in the next ten days. Mm-hmm. If the Leafs made a trade today, and the player that they acquire, presumably from an American team, we don't know that. Um, if they arrive at the border today, I think they miss four games. Uh, They miss two against Calgary, two against Edmonton, and then they're probably back for uh, it's a two or three game series against the Jets. If it's a goalie, boy, does that leave you open. You're literally looking at a Veveline and Hutchinson tandem if Jack Campbell is not healthy. So for my hot take research, Steve and Jesse, Mm -hmm. because I did a little hot take research, I looked at some potential goalies who are UFA, who the Leafs could acquire for relatively low cost. Who I'm going to power rank them. They're pending free agents. Pending free agents who I think you could power rank. I think the goalie that you need to, if you're looking for a, if you believe Freddie's the guy, then the guy to acquire is Jonathan Bernier in Detroit. <laughs> Come on, Adam. Who's the damn starter for the playoffs? If you believe Freddie Anderson is your starter for the playoffs, that's my qualification. Then Jonathan Bernier is your guy. If you do not believe that Freddie Anderson, because Jonathan Bernier in Detroit, by the way, has a 912 save percentage with Detroit on the, on the horrendous Detroit Red Wings. That's impressive. Now, if you don't believe that Freddie Anderson is your starter for the playoffs, if you're not sure, there's a little guy just across the water who's got a 919 save percentage who's up this year. Who's that? Across, across the, water. the water. I don't know who Which you're water? talking about. Linus Olmark in Buffalo. Nine nineteen safer. Yeah, he's across the Lake, Lake Ontario. Oh, you mean Lake Ontario? I'm yeah. like, what goalie in Europe 
I didn't know you didn't specify the body of water. The Pacific Adam. Ocean. The He's water that is right down the street from you. <laughs> well, Steven. I didn't know that. It's like a block away. <laughs> You're a block away. You're a block away. He meant Linus Lake Allmark. Huron, <laughs> Steve. Linus Allmark. I would say Linus Allmark. If you're looking for a new starter, and the Sabres fans are going to be like, whoa, 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 I get it. But you suck. Imagine Linus Allmark on a good team. If he's playing at goalie average hockey, and oh, come on, Sabres fans know that. If he's playing just average NHL goalie hockey, the Leafs have a have a start a chance. Another couple guys I would look at if you're looking to you know look as a as a one A one B starter situation. Anti Ranta in Arizona has a nine twelve, and Devin Dubnik could be had for absolutely nothing in San Jose. He's got a nine oh four. Remember, not my boy, that's not Sharks, my guy. Yeah. The Sharks are bad. The Sharks are bad, and he's still got a save percentage over nine hundred. the The reality is, guys, if if the Leafs are hard up against the cap. Uh, don't be surprised if Freddie Anderson is one of the guys that moves on trade deadline day to make the goaltending situation work. It's got to be their number one priority, especially if you don't have a timetable for Jack Campbell's return. You have got to make that happen first. Let me throw a nightmare scenario out there. Oh, God. This the Leafs is, you're, you're trade Freddie. This. Leafs trade Freddie. Somehow he ends up on another team that's looking for a goaltender. Carolina. And he wins the damn cup. <laughs> oh God! I here's here's what I want. You know who I want to acquire at the trade deadline, preferably before the trade deadline. Who? Old Freddie. Yeah. I want him back. 2018, Freddie. Yes. 2017. He he had shit tober. He had a terrible first month with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and we're all like, "Ooh, five years of that, huh?" And then he was unbeatable. You take out that first month and he was Vesna worthy. Like he was in the conversation. I feel like he's put together long stretches in at least three different seasons with the Leafs where you could argue, hey, he, this guy should be probably top five. And maybe probably five, a few of those seasons in Vesna voting. And I think he was actually. Mm-hmm. Actually, let me look that up. He was, but um, uh, I want old Freddie back now. Jake B. Leafs uh, started a sub stack because he's been riding Freddie. And uh, within what is uh, a he wrote an article, stack? I don't know really. But Basically, it's a, blog, it's a thread he, that you continue, I think, to go on, isn't it? Like on on, on Twitter, something like that. Something you just basically like reply to the same original tweet and you'd create a big long thread that goes over multiple months, I think. I don't know. Something like that. Anyway. So he I don't know, Jesse. About- you tell me you're the social media guy. I don't know shit. <laughs> the hell am I said, telling you? Steve said it and then I said, I don't know what it means. Uh, I didn't expect so to be sad. challenged <laughs> on it. <laughs> I, didn't, I expected to just say it and everybody just uh, accept that I said it. Hey, uh, yeah, exactly. Okay, here we go. 17-18, he was fourth in Vesna voting. And 18-19, he was 10th. So I was right by saying he was there. He was in the conversation. Right? And uh, not to poo-poo the Linus Allmark, but he's been injured since February like 29th. Great. Add it don't to the f- friggin' list. <laughs> well, you know? listen, don't hate it, actually, because he... Uh, if, assuming he gets better, he could stay... The more he stays away from that Sabres dressing room, the better. Um, so, I want him to be completely quarantined, not from COVID, but from whatever's going on in Buffalo with the Sabres right now. What if he's injured? What if he gets better? You know? <laughs> okay. Do you see all the shitty answers we're coming up oh, with? Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. Like, it's we terrible. need an answer to this. Yeah. Like, the rest of the lineup, we have, oh, we could improve there. We could improve there. We need a not shitty answer to who is our goalie heading into the playoffs. And, and you, all the answers suck. Well, you're not going to get a quality starter now. There's no way. Yeah, because no team with like every team with a good starter is kind of in the race, you know, because mm-hmm. goaltending can keep you up. Money talks, folks. Money talks, fellas. There are okay, some but who? Hurting, yeah, there who? are some hurting who? teams right now. Who? There's some Adam. You said Ranta. Listen, if if the sun and the moon is what it costs, how do I get Darcy Kemper in my life? Well, no kidding. I mean, that's a potential Olympic goalie, but you think Arizona's going to give that up? They already don't have any draft picks. Everyone's going to price. Where are they in the standings? They're not good. Division, fifth of eight in their division. Sixth. Okay, sixth. I think they're tied for fifth, but they're not. I don't think they're going to make it. No, I don't think so either. 
I mean, it's I listen, I love the idea of Darcy Kemp, right? I think that'd be great. And listen, and Dubas has done a very good job with his trades. I, I think that's inarguable at this point. Mm-hmm. There's been some really, really great trades that he has made. Um, sucked. Okay, the Kadri sucked. Okay. <laughs> Other than that, though, decent body of work. Yes. Yeah, I, you're going to miss on sucks when it was necessary and like in Kadri circumstance, it doesn't suck. Yeah, but it's hard. been pretty bad. But Steve, it was going to be TJ Brody and Kadri yeah. nixed that. He didn't yeah, want to go to Calgary. Kadri's fault. Yeah. So Kadri not only fucked us in the playoffs, he fucked us in the trade too. Then don't make it. Steve, he couldn't. No, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you the YouTube clip that you put out. Yeah. The, on this show. I didn't say trade him for a shitty trade. You said he had to be traded. Yeah, yeah I'm going a good one. I thought it would be bad. good. No. no. This is, Adam, this is going to be the Stephen A. Smith clip of Stephen A. arguing with Stephen A. Because this is, Steve, this was your argument to us when you were saying it was necessary to trade Kadri. When and has now you're Stephen on the a, other side. What the hell? When has Stephen A. ever been like, they need to trade LeBron for nothing? It needs to be for next to nothing. I think LeBron. LeBron should be traded to the Raptors for, I don't know, Stanley and a second round pick. Saying that Dubas traded Kadri for next to nothing is a lie. No, that's not, not next what to happened. nothing. It, he did not trade him for sufficient value for Nazem Kadri. Fair. Fair, I guess. If he His trades him for Kerfoot and Brody and retains Brody, that's a great trade. But it's Kerfoot who were as a fan base, essentially shoving out the door, even though he's Ooh, been I don't fine. Mind. And Barry was gone because he stunk. Yeah, and then like, we got Brody. As a free agent, it doesn't count. What are you, I mean, an Oilers writer? That's but, not how this works. You know, if you look at the Taylor Hall deal as Taylor Hall for Adam Larson and uh-huh. Milan Lucic, exactly. it still looks like shit. <laughs> Yeah, Adam. Um, I, I said, Adam, I can you? That was a thing. They can you said that? <laughs> can you cosplay as Bill Armstrong right now? And Steve is Kyle Dubas. Okay. And Steve, I want you to trade for Darcy Kemper. Mm. So Adam, you you hate your owners, and I, uh, it's really hot outside, but your team's terrible. Well, it's good because I'm already sweaty, no matter what. Anyway, <laughs> um, and let me just throw this out there, um, um, Bill Armstrong. You need to read the pre- the article before all the bullshit about the Arizona Coyotes came out. And by bullshit, I mean true bullshit. Um, but the all the the Bill Armstrong introductory article where he's like, I live in a hotel room and I go to I go to work at five a.m. High athletic. I'm gonna I'm just gonna go and dominate. This he it, it was I honestly I'm so upset that I didn't bring it up on the show I had it in the list we ignored it but the quotes from it are just insane this man is crazy anyways so, so now that's you and you okay. <laughs> hi Kyle what can I do for you I've been at work since 4 a.m. <laughs> wow that's really impressive I've been texting memes to to the Arkells um so anyway I was wondering. Uh, I just want to let you know I'd do anything to bring a cup to Arizona. Well, you know, it's funny you should mention that because we'd like to see you in the Stanley Cup final. And we were hoping to make that a reality by acquiring one of Steve, I just want to interrupt you. I'm sorry, Kyle. I just want to interrupt you and say we're a family here. This is a family organization. And we treat everybody like a family. (laughs) Family. Family. Um, We have similar conversations about that. Um, We like to wear your glasses. Our mascot is a bear. Hold on. You can't cut. Where are your freaking? Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Continue. Sorry. I forgot. I'm the only general manager who wears glasses. <laughs> ever. <laughs> I, f- I forgot about that. Don't you have actual glasses, by the way? Where are they? They're not here is where oh. they are. Adam. <laughs> is, do I have fake ones? I don't know. <laughs> don't you have any glasses in your props or anything? Nothing? Okay. Fine. I don't know, man. All right, all right. So you I'm going. Right, what's, the, what's the trade here, boys? What's, what's the trade? What's, what's the trade, Dubas? You hey, got to offer something, hey, Dubas. Hey, four eyes. What's the trade? Well, you see, you know how you have a goalie who makes money. I can offer you one who doesn't. <laughs> Trevor <laughs> Anderson. We have already paid most of his deal. He is a UFA, but if you can convince him to stay, you'd probably have a nice little tandem there with. Anti Ranta, uh, and he's friends with Austin Matthews. So, you know, in a few years, a little friendly competition, but that would probably help you down the line. 
My name's Kyle Dubas. Oh, uh, here at the uh, Arizona Family Coyotes organization, we like to sell family members, so I will do it. I will sell it. That a uh, one for one? The, the, one for one. one. For one. Sell no, it. no, the sell lease it. would have to swing the ball. No, give me no, I don't need anything. Just give me give me the hell out of here. Can I can I be traded with <laughs> I want can I leave Sorry, with I'm Ranta playing both as well? characters now. Um no, I think I think you'd have to give I think you'd like listen, I think the Leafs are ready to fire their first and second round picks out the door. I don't think they care. I think this year it's like, go for it, right? You got Nick Robertson emerging. You've got a young core that signed for a long time. You go for it. And, and you know what? I would say that for the next two years. And people, like I can just see Scott Wheeler's tweets right now, be like, oh, for God's sakes, they're going to fall down the prospect rankings. And that's okay if they win. They have to win, though. And so I think, I think if you're the Leafs, you, you, you throw that first round pick around. You throw that second round pick around. Uh, you throw that uh, Timothy Lilligren around. Um, well, the, the Coyotes are interesting because they have no picks, but this also a combination of picks and prospects. I mean, the shame about picks is ugh, then you got to draft people with them <laughs> and people are expensive. You got to develop them and tell them how to play hockey and stuff. But if you give them a little less assembly required stuff. I don't listen. You mean I think prospects that are already developed? Yes. The conversation we're having here doesn't have to be the Coyotes. That's just my dream. I and either want also, old Freddie back uh, or a new goalie because this isn't enough. And also, Kemper is also injured. Just to throw that out. There. Wonderful. He was injured. That's last why Rant Monday. is playing. Yeah, yeah. He was injured oh, God, last I Monday. It. I think it was like a lower body injury. He left the game. He hasn't been back since. So. Okay. Give Can I, me a goddamn. <laughs> Jesse, Linus Give Allmark. me a goalie. <laughs> Linus Allmark, how long will he be out for? Uh, he he was out for three weeks, like at the end of December through February, and then he came back in Feb, and then he got injured at the end of Feb again. So uh, um, it's kind of just dated. It's kind of just pending a couple of weeks now. I also want to throw out there uh, on the trade front with Buffalo that Elliot Friedman kind of ixnade the Eric Stahl thing over the weekend on the Sunday night game, yeah. even though I want Eric Stahl badly. And so does Anthony Stewart, who's a smart hockey man, not me. Um, but apparently, I guess the two week, uh, the two week thing is rough for veterans that they can't play. And my thing was Joe Thornton missed like a month. And he was injured. And it was an interesting growing take. concern there. Yeah. yeah well, and, and then, yeah, yeah, I saw that headline too. Uh, and then the, and then the other thing I thought was like, and, and Anthony Stewart said it right away, credit to him because no one ever talks back on any panel in this country. I don't understand it, but Anthony Stewart did. And I love it. And he was like, with well, Pelotons exist. Like, I don't understand. Can he not stay in shape? <laughs> and and, Pelotons and exist. I think he's right. You. Like yeah. if you can get Eric Stahl, get Eric Stahl. Who cares about the two-week quarantine? I'm sure Eric Stahl has taken two weeks off hockey before and been fine. It was a fun back and forth to see that on awesome. the panel. Because Anthony awesome. just came back and was like, no, I think that'd be a great move. And yeah. if he wants to go play with a cup contender, like I'm sure he'd stomach two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Elliot Friedman's like, knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. <laughs> Smart thing. And we're like, knowledge. what about this, Elliot? Take and that. Then, and then Elliot's like, I love Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he said that. He said that? <laughs> Man, great who, doesn't, business. who doesn't love Shaw? Yeah, who doesn't? Yeah. I would pay forty dollars a share for it. Man, That's- I know all about them. <laughs> oh, you will. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> what? Uh, I'm trying to look up Shaw. No, I'm trying to look up West. goalies. Just goalies who can be had. And the and list isn't. All- in- yeah. I don't know how you do it. Hey, you know who's uh, got a 908 save percentage and a 12 and 3 record, does he? Oh. James Reimer. Yeah, Carolina's not dreaming him up. Yeah, why would I they know. do that? Why would they do that? I know, but let me dream. Shut up. By the way, did you find it odd that Jake Gardner was on waivers? He was playing 15 minutes a night. Was that just like a cat move or something? Or what was the deal with that? No, it's it's brilliant. Um, I don't think it's a cat move necessarily. Um it, it gives them flexibility. This season is the season to put players on waivers. Um, unless you're you lose, the Leafs. Uh, unless you're the Leafs. If you lose, um, well, no, it worked out for Spezza. If you lose them, good. Your owner's happy because uh, you no longer have to pay them. Um, but odds are you're going to be able to keep them because no one can friggin' afford it. Think of like who's been on waivers this year. 
Spets is over half a game, uh, half a point a game player. Granted, yep. he he goes, well, I'm going to retire. So that's a little different, I guess. Um, Tyler Johnson was on waivers, I think, more than once. Gardner was on waivers. Several guys who make millions of dollars have been put on waivers. And Back everyone said no. That monstrosity con- contract that he has. Mitch Marner goes on waivers tomorrow. <laughs> you know, who's able to claim him? Nobody. Who can just go, yes, thank you? Like, Imagine literally, who has the room? <laughs> Imagine they lost him because they're just not playing a, around. There's not a single team that could do it. <laughs> no, in my fantasy scenario, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. here, let me go to cap. For, who has $11 million in cap space right now? Maybe the Senators. That's a lot of teams. Uh, projected cap space. Nobody. Literally nobody. The New Jersey Devils have the most cap space in the NHL. They can't do it. Huh. Oh, wait, no. Projected ca- projected cap space and current cap space. I'm not getting it. So maybe there are one, two, three, four teams, if I'm reading this right. The Sens, LOL. Uh, the Kings, Red Wings. And, oh, the Kings uh, would do it in a heartbeat. Devils. In a heartbeat. <laughs> no, the Red Wings. Red Wings would do it. Yeah. would just be like, yes, I will take it. Adam, I please. don't hate, speaking of Red Wings, I don't hate the Bernier thing. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Say it with us. Blue Chew. Blue Chew is making waves and bringing more confidence to the bedroom by offering chewable tablets that can help get men stronger and longer lasting erections. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve harder and stronger erections to combat all forms of ED. And ED is something we need to talk about a little bit more. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no doctor's visits are needed, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. You sign up at bluechew.com, consult one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're all approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, it is all done online. So, so if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we've got a special deal just for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code 2, T-W-O, at checkout. Just pay $5 at shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code 2, to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this latest podcast. Campbell's not injured in this scenario. So we are ha- we have Anderson, Bernier, and Campbell. He is injured in this scenario. The only scenario is the one in front of us. We have no idea what Jack Campbell can provide. Mm-hmm. We don't. Right. No, but we I'm do saying, not know. Like, let's say in a couple weeks he recovers. So going into the home stretch of the season, like leading into the playoffs, if you make the deal for Bernier, you have these three goalies, ideally. Like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate that going into the playoffs. You know? No, I don't know how you, ugh, I don't know I, how you make it happen. And I don't know how having three goalies works. I do. I don't know how. Put Freddie Anderson on waivers. Who's taking Adam. him? Put him on waivers. <laughs> Who's taking him? I dare you. Take him. Somebody's going to take him. Good. No. And then who plays, who plays well, for the you, Leafs? If you get, if you get, if you first off, you got to know the timeline of Jack Campbell, which we don't, right? So if, yeah. if we were inside the organization, we have a better track record on that. But if you, from what I've seen from Freddie in the playoffs, I'm sometimes sometimes in life you can take the sure thing, and you know it's maybe not the best thing, but it's the sure thing. And other times you take the magic box, right? We've talked about this before. <laughs> the I know boat, the sure thing is going to get us there. The sure thing. But the magic box has a better chance than the sure thing, does it? It can not? even be a sure thing. Might Freddy, even be a sure thing. Oh, he's the strangest goalie. He's the strangest goalie. Hi, we're offering you a goalie who will, quote me on it, will steal you two playoff games every series. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So, like, we're going to win? Well, now, wait. <laughs> I didn't say that. I Because seriously, you look back at Freddie's playoff career with the Leafs. He's stolen like two games this year. And melted down two other games. Oh, yeah. So, sorry, to get back Hansel and Gretel to yeah. what I was talking about with Jake B. Leafs, that uh, Freddie Anderson article, there is a thread of him in elimination games. Oh, Jesus. It's shocking. It's, I, that I was the moment. See it. I want to see it, but I need to be in a better frame of mind. I need to be happier. Uh, I'm plenty happy today. And it was the moment I was like, okay, let's move on. Like it was, it was my done. 
it was my done deal. Done deal. We're done. Um, because and let, it's nothing against the guy. He has given them quality goaltending. It's, it's not that I hate the guy. It's just that he gave them quality goaltending and I miss it. You know what I, I can't the quality goaltending. I, there's times when we're doing the show where I pre can't stand what the reaction is going to be because what I'm going to get and what we're going to get is, and you're going to hear this and it's going to be echoed from other people. And it'll be like, it's sort of like subtweeted out there. Um, People, I can't believe people, the show. Saying. people didn't listen to the, or they listen to the show, but they won't directly quote it back, but they'll be like, listen, um, Lee fans, they have turned on Freddie Anderson. Nope. We haven't turned on Freddie Anderson. We want Freddie Anderson to be great. We like Freddie, the guy. Well, and, but, and but the, hard the facts. reality is the body of work, especially from what we've seen this year is not good enough. Period. And, and hard, story. hard facts though, Adam, the Leafs did a really, really good job of, preventing scoring chances, preventing odd man rushes, and they haven't been as good at that lately. Yeah, they were on a PDO bender, and it's come back to earth, and everything's kind of evened out, and they're exposing their all their flaws, which is their defense is still mediocre, and the goaltending is mediocre, and they can score a ton. This is the problem, Jesse. Like, you need, you just, you simply need saves. You simply need saves. Every time you make a defensive blunder, it cannot go in your net. And I think he's had at least one really good save in each of his recent games, maybe even two. Uh, that's the gig. That's the, the gig. That I, you you got to stop getting out-dueled. The thing I, I don't like about goaltender coverage is that, A, you can't criticize them ever. B, whenever you do criticize them, people will be like, well, that was a defensive blunder. That's what the fucking goalie's there for. Yeah, that's why he's oh, there. If you have, have a hard job, blunders, you don't need a goalie. You'd play six players. Why? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, of course, there's a defensive blunder, but that's the goalie's job. What are we doing? Yeah. It's... Oh, you can always point to a mistake on the ice where the team that the goalie is on loses possession and the puck comes back the other way. You can always do that. All right. That's how Every goals goal are scored. Ever. Yeah. yeah. So you but, score dude, goals. Look at look at what Connor Hellebuck did. Oh. Look at what he did. Now, you can't ask for that every single game. And the Jets don't get it every single game. They don't. Those are those games, by the way, are called losses. Uh, but they're in and, second right now with an inferior team. And they're the Leafs got it. In front of him. In a three-game stretch where they used three different goalies, they got that type of goaltending from three different guys. And you saw how good they were versus Edmonton. Like, that's what happens when it happens for the Leafs. And then it evens out eventually, and the other team does it to you, and you just hope that you come out on top more times than the other team, you know? You so, hope you get that type of goaltending and with consistent play and defense, you know? When was – have the Leafs this season goalied a team? No, the Leafs would, have been goalied. Have they goalied someone? I you think when I mean? you have Michael Hutchison uh, pitch a shutout, that's goalieing the other team. <laughs> I think no. it's defending, defensing the other team. The, yeah, um, this is this is the thing. So all all the Leafs need to do is simply play the best defensive hockey they have in two decades, <laughs> consistently. Um, like you know what I mean. You you need you just need saves. If you, you can't acquire sense. a goaltender, are you satisfied if Dubis gets a top four defenseman? Yes. Of course. Yes. Of co Listen, we already know this tandem's more than good enough if the defense in front of them is good enough. But I need mm -hmm. to know, heading into a series, if I don't have a team that's at max potential, which is what you have a lot of the time in the two and a half month slog that is the Stanley Cup playoffs, I, I need to know you can uh, you could bail us out. The Leafs don't get bailed out enough. And they used to get bailed out too much. Yep. And it's come back the other way. Um, this is the first time in, I think, my lifetime where the Leafs have actually had a strong defense or a, or a mediocre to strong defense. Does that make sense? A middle of the pack. And, yeah, and, it's and, it's and not the thing even is, strong. <laughs> it's it's it has manageable. Yeah, it's like <laughs> decent. But the, the thing is, is that like, Jesse, I think you nailed something there is, is like, if, if, if it comes down to it, the options for goaltendings are, are bad for a starter. Yeah. That's why I think you go after like a Jonathan Bernier or something like that. I mean, Lin Linus Olmark, I still love the idea of just because that guy was, was really good on a terrible hockey team, but so is Bernier and Bernier could be had for almost nothing. It's too bad. Ken Holland isn't still 
the general manager in Detroit because Steve Eiserman is actually going to exact some sort of cost for Bernier. Um, but the, the, I think the thing is, um, when it comes to um, your options that are available, Matthias Ekholm is an incredible defenseman. And if you can get him, I don't know how, this, how do the Bruins always end up with these guys? It's always the Bruins that get the guy. You know, Rick Nash and uh, who was that other? The, um, uh, who was the center they who just destroyed the Leafs a couple of years ago? They picked him up from the wild for like a third Coyle. round pick. Charlie yeah. Coyle. Charlie Coyle. What a great pickup that was. Mm-hmm. Like, they know their they, identity, man. It's always the Bruins. They yeah. always get it. They always, you never hear anybody complaining about the, the Bruins um, uh, uh, system. They always Dude. develop guys, Dude. but they always fire their first round pick into the sun. It's crazy. Trent Frederick, who is a Bruins first round pick. Have you seen the clip of him just friggin' flattening someone on, I think it was the Rangers from one of the oh, outdoor yeah. games? Yeah. yeah. He just, you hear the impact, and then he just goes to their bench. After crushing this guy in front of his bench, he says to the Rangers bench, Who wants it? That's a Bruin made in the last. He was also the yeah. guy who went at Ovi. Yeah, a yes, he was. Same guy. And got Tom Frederick's Wilson awesome. suspended. Tom yeah. Wilson <laughs> suspended right now because of Trent Frederick. Awesome, awesome player. He's a He's Bruin awesome. that the Bruins made in a lab. Yep. We need a Leaf who is a Leaf that the Leafs made in a lab. Wayne Simmons. I think we already have – well, I was going to say Zach Hyman. Wayne Simmons is a – like it's, it's like Jurassic Park. They, like, found – 90s Leafs mosquitoes like in sap <laughs> yes and and, and they're rain. and they, yeah he's a 90s leaf Zach yeah. Hyman is like modern leaf even though I think they're like what five years apart in age. yeah it's crazy right? <laughs> but crazy. it's I uh, it's hard without watching them like I can't I, I'm not doing a good job of explaining the difference but can I yes Adam can I just throw something out at, the, at that Steve I think that's a really when Elliot Friedman talked about something on the 31 Thoughts podcast, okay? Mm-hmm. So the Leafs are in on at home. So are the Bruins. So are the Caps. So are the Jets. Some other teams as well. Flyers, maybe, if they can turn Carter Hart's season around. I mean, I was betting big on the Flyers. Carter Hart's let me down here. Now. So young. At home. Yeah, he'll be fine. Um, if he comes to the Leafs, you now have Riley Muzzin at home on the left side. Who isn't in the top four? Depends on the game. Like, depends on who's playing well. Which, that's the way it should be. Right. That's the way it should be. Uh, Mikhail Sergachev was, uh, uh, I think he was third pair for the Lightning. And it's funny. So I've been, uh, I've just been watching some of our older videos and some of mine. I I watched my last LFR before the season was postponed, Mm -hmm. just as a time capsule to see the things I said. And, you know, I was like, oh, well, who knows? Maybe the next game will be canceled. We don't know. And one of the things they said was Mikhail Sergachev, despite taking a slap shot to the face, led the lightning in ice time. Because that was his night to lead the team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't have to be Riley Brody every night. No, nope, it doesn't it have doesn't. to be Muzzin Hall. It could be Ekholm, whoever. <laughs> you know, it's it it should. You know, teams play. We should agree that the Muzzin Hall pairing plays differently than the Riley Brody pairing, right? Mm-hmm. And we should also agree that not every NHL team plays the same. Mm-hmm. So logically. Uh, one of them should be the top pair one night and another should be the top pair on another. Logically, it doesn't work out that way, really. How do you feel about this? Ekholm, the the ask for Ekholm is a prospect, top prospect. Let's say Lilligren. Okay. Sure. It's not going to be Sandine and Robertson. We know that. So it could be Lilligren. Probably probably wouldn't be Rodin Amiroff either because I don't imagine Nashville's as interested. But there's also some scuttlebutt that if the Leafs have to make this trade, it costs you Riley. I just uh, don't I see don't. a scenario where that makes you better. Right. Me neither. Just wanted and, to check. There's a lot of people who are really down on Morgan Riley, by the way, right now. Yeah, but you don't know what you got till it's gone. 
Like, mm-hmm. listen, you can be down on him. You could want to push him down in the lineup. Um, I There's no scenario to me where the Leafs trade Riley this year and get better. I don't know how you make that happen. And who and do you bear got- Ekholm with if he comes here? Who do I pick? Ooh, I mean, very interesting, man. Very interesting. Like, who's your right side D with Matias Ekholm? Is it Travis Dermott? Logically, it's, well, it's one of Dermott or Bogo, both of who have not been good enough recently. Mm-hmm. Um, like, Bogo's isn't that, isn't that just, though. he's been better than we thought. Yeah, but isn't that just perfect that, like, they trade Lettinen and those guys are playing their worst hockey of the season? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just a lot going wrong at the same time, and maybe we're overthinking it. But it's, what's what's really worrying me is the excuse coming up the most often is, well, look at how many games they've played recently in the amount of days that they played them. They're tired. Well, the great thing about that is by the time the conference final hits, you're fresh as a daisy. <laughs> it's true. That can't be a thing, man. Like it's it's one thing if you're a tired team playing a rested team on a back-to-back. You can't fall apart and make dumb decisions and dumb plays and give the puck away and just completely get away from who you are because you're tired. That's not what champions do. It's not how you win. It's not how you win games, series, championships. We got to move on because uh, we have some other things to get to and we are actually running out of time, strangely enough. So I would like to uh, jump over to San Jose and talk about Eric Carlson's comments yesterday uh, discussing that, you know, the fact that now San Jose is back to what NHL 500, which is still three games under 500. Um, but they are 11, 11, and I think three. And Eric Carlson said, I signed here for a long time because I didn't want to go through a rebuild like I did. And he insinuated the whole time in Ottawa. Now the senators, while Eric Carlson was a Senator made the playoffs six of nine years. So senators fans are noticeably pissed about it. And I understand why. However, the reason that they made the playoffs is because of Eric Carlson, right? Yeah. I think what Eric Carlson was saying is he didn't want to be the only good player anymore. And I think that's a fair comment. I mean, there were good players, but let's be honest. Uh, The one thing I, I have an issue with with Eric Carlson is you signed in San Jose and didn't look at anyone's age. Pavelski was 34 Mark Edward Vlasic was 34, 35. Brent Burns is 34, 35. Joe Thornton was around uh, when Stonehenge went up. Uh, Patty Marlowe coming back. Like, are we, did he, he, he must have seen this coming. And if he didn't, why would you sign the contract? That's my, I don't have an issue with the Senator's comment at all. I have an issue with the fact that you signed with San Jose, not fully expecting to be a part of a rebuild. What were you expecting? You These guys had two, three team. years max. You signed with a team, and then a year and a half in, you got zero loyalty to the team, to the fan base, to anything that's going on. When you sign this massive deal, and you know what they present the future, and you can see what's going to happen, and either you're going to stick around or you don't sign the contract. I think you look at those contracts that the Sharks have, and you know we look at it from our couches and computer chairs and. Go, oh boy, that's going to cause them problems. None of us were saying the San, uh, the San Jose Sharks are going to suck. Very few of us were saying that. We we're saying, oh boy, down the line, they're going to have trouble. We didn't think down the line was going to be immediately. And that's basically what has happened to the Sharks. I think Eric Carlson looked at the Sharks and went, boy, that team looks real good. And I'm Eric Carlson, so I'm going to make them better. Mm-hmm. We're going to have the most unstoppable right side in hockey. Me, Brent Burns, and who cares? We're going to be the most unstoppable right side in hockey. You can play us on the same pair if you want. We're going to demolish you. We're going to destroy you. There's going to be very little turnover because uh, all these contracts. I'm going to play with guys I've played with and against in the Olympics. Um, there are a few young guys, Tamo Meyer, you know, coming up who are going to supplement the lineup. It kind of reminds me of when Jerome McGinley signed with the Avalanche and we know that was the wrong decision now because they were riding a ridiculous PDO bender and, and everything. But if I'm Jerome again, I go, gosh, the avalanche finished. I think it was third in the NHL. Mm-hmm. I know I'm going to be playing with Landis Gog for my whole contract. I know I'm going to be playing with Duchesne for my whole contract. I'm going to be playing with McKinnon for my whole contract. 
Um, I'm trying to think of who else was on the avalanche at the time, you know, but I know who I'm going to be playing with. Mm -hmm. I want the best situation. I like the mountains. I like winning. I like knowing who my teammates are going to be. And when he signed that deal with the avalanche, I think he thought he knew all those things. Same with Carlson and the sharks. And you know, those, what was the contract? Eight years. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, three, four years from now, five years from now, I mean, you can't live life that way. You know what I mean? Like, ah, that's, that's, I'm looking to win a cup with the San Jose Sharks at least one in the first three years. We'll figure out the last five later, but that's what we all thought, dude, that's what we all thought was going to happen. Like, there's a reason they didn't lottery protect that pick. Who humpsed among us thought the Sharks were going to end up giving up the third overall pick? We did say their day was coming. Yeah. And I just said, I don't like the precedent that, hey, you sign a deal and then it doesn't work out immediately as how you had hoped, and then you're out. Like, and then you start criticizing the team. When you're, I don't like the precedent from, what'd you say? What's the quote? Can you read the quote again? Let me pull it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Like when you're an eleven million dollar player, that is, uh, that's your job, right? <laughs> you are the one who prevents you're, the rebuild, Eric. You're the franchise. Yes. You so, know, Drew, Drew Doughty's been taking some criticism, but at least Drew Doughty is like, oh yeah, people. He's had a great year. People, yeah, people are doubting me. He's producing. I deserve to be on the Olympic team. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That is, you can talk about the performance. I don't know what is underlying numbers are but he's got the attitude at least of a player making his money yeah drew Doughty is an la king like that that is his persona and it seems like eric carlson just like hey i'm just here for a drive by and i signed this giant deal and now i'm out um, and he wants to I, be there for when they don't suck and he wants to be the reason they that they ex- don't suck exactly. well he needs to be then yeah well, Dowdy, no, Dowdy, Dowdy, oh, Dowdy. Dowdy yeah. wants to drag this franchise that he wears, that he's a part of. He wants to drag them back to contention and has won and, with and has won with. And you want right. Eric Carlson to have that attitude where it's like, I know winning's not acceptable here. And I'm going to help this franchise losing. come back. Sure, yeah. or, sorry, losing. Losing. Not <laughs> losing we, not hey, winning. This is not what I signed up for. Winning is for <laughs> losers. <laughs> <laughs> losing is not acceptable here and i'm gonna drag these guys back to contention because i'm here for the long haul and Let this me read just seems like such a defeatist attitude obviously i didn't sign here to go through a rebuild or go through what i did for 10 years in ottawa but it is what it is i think we need to find a way to build with a core group build with a core group that we have here and figure out a way to be competitive here in upcoming years to be fair to the sharks if they had good goaltending they probably would be a lot better um but I don't know how you manage that. And as the team gets older, like I, and the way I think what irked people too, and I understand why Sens fans are pissed. Like, I don't want to go through what I went through 10 years. Like we loved you for 10 fucking years, man. Come on. Also, you had success there. You did. You did. You went to the conference finals. All right. Cause of like, him. Cause yeah. of him. But I guess he wanted some support. But when you want to make $11 million, you don't get the same support as you do when you make five. You are the, you are the first guy. You're the support. Yes. <laughs> You're the lead guy, man. That's you. And the way he said it was like, obviously, I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to be, there's a bit of a, and I hate to put it this way, because this isn't really fair to Eric. He was frustrated. It sounded like whining. It sounded like whining. Like, here's the, here, here we are. It reads like whining. Con- yes. It reads like whining. Watch him say it. Watch him say it. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that we're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. People are losing their jobs. We are the worldwide means. Sorry, I got to be that. Yeah, sorry. You're right. Right. We're in a pandemic. Everybody's affected. (laughs) Thank you for that. Appreciate it. The economy's not great. People aren't making big money. They're not feeling. We weren't financially satisfied before the pandemic. Imagine what not being able to work has done. And you're whinging at eleven point five million dollars a year. American? Is it point five? I think it's eleven and a half. (laughs) Adam, can you read the quote in your whiny Twitter voice? No, I can't. That's not nice. <laughs> okay. It's not nice. I'm not going to okay, do it. Don't do that. Was it? But it, you, wa- you watch and you go, come on, man. And I understand frustration. I sound like I whine sometimes too. Fine. But what? this is unacceptable from a leader on this team. I do like the fact you said we got to find a way to build with the guys here. Yeah, because you don't have a choice, Eric. You are the guy here. 
Right. You and Brent Burns and Mark Edward Vlasic, the, well, the, the, what Mark, you know, Mark Edward Vlasic was an Olympic caliber defenseman. He is no longer, still makes Olympic caliber money. You know, you got to deal with that. And you signed up to be that guy. So you figure it out. Now, I think it's a f- guy who's frustrated. Sure. Not just with losing, oh, yeah. but um, with what he can do, what mm-hmm. he can and can't do. Eric Carlson has done far more with far less in his NHL career. And the difference between him now and in 2017 is now he can't do it the way he used to. He can't. Well, his body won't let him. I don't think his body will let him. that point at 30, you know? But like, most Eric people Carlson, do. He's still Man. a young hockey player, yeah, though. Doug Wilson should have known that, though. Dude, his Achilles. He played for months on a broken foot. Yeah. Like yeah. we talk about hard miles, like there's a reason it certain ways. Yeah, like good <laughs> for him for getting turn. the money. He's earned it. Uh, but the issue is the contract's gonna go on for like another six years or whatever. If More. I may. If I may. Oh. Uh, so the the first year he's there, they go to the the um, the Western Conference finals and they lose mm-hmm. to the St. Louis Blues, right? Mm-hmm. Last sure. year, not so good. And here's the second part of the quote. He said, I mean, I think the year we had Last year, I think it's pretty, pretty clear that we're not going to be the team that maybe we were the first year I got here. You know, it, it doesn't take rocket science to figure that out. So what if on, Eric Carlson dude. is still Eric Carlson? It's just he's got to worry about every time the puck going behind him that it's going to go in the net. Well, and that's fair. They haven't had good goaltending. Martin Jones has stunk for a while. Does Eric Carlson need a goalie to be Eric Carlson? You want to talk about teams whose first priority should be to get goaltending. San Jose. I mean, everyone, the second that signing was made, Dom, all the stats guys were like, Dubnik? That's your answer? All right. And I think he's been better than Jones. I'd have to see the number. I mean, he's got a 904. It's better than Jones. Cool. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's not enough. It's not enough. And it's not like... Uh, Craig Anderson was competing for the Vesna every year. He was just good. He was just good, and every now and then activated Goku mode, where he was just God. What a weird goalie! Every I feel like making fifty consecutive saves tonight. How about you guys? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was Craig Anderson for a yes. long time. And he was, you know what? He was incredible for the Senators, and I think that's the other part that like people are like. I think people are ups, uh, upset with him about. It. I think it, you know, I don't think. Sorry. I, I understand. I, if, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I wanted to ask you guys ever watch a game by accident? Like oh, you, yeah. didn't, you didn't mean well, to, the, you just happened to be watching the game? Yeah. Like Terry, yeah. when I watched Terry Chris for the first time do the intermission report, and I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> I like him anyway. I watched, I think it was game one of a series between the Avalanche and the Sharks years and years ago at Justin Fisher's house. And Craig Anderson was the goalie for the Avs. Oh, yeah. And uh, we could not shut it off because we were like, when are the Sharks going to beat him? (laughs) And it was like, I swear to God, it was 50 consecutive saves. Something like that. We could not turn it off. That was the kind of goalie he could be sometimes. Sorry, Adam. No, no. I, I, that was, anyway, the, the, The long and the short of the Eric Carlson thing is, uh, whatever the answer is, Eric's going to be the lead on that. Him and Brent Burns, got to figure it out. Kevin LeBlanc. Like, this is, this is what you got, man. And Doug Wilson's got to get a goalie. That's also clear. And I wouldn't be shocked if Freddie Anderson is a San Jose Shark next year. You got to find a way to buy out Martin Jones, though. Uh, how, how much has he got left? It's like three years. After okay. this one? Yeah, oh, at like let me do five. The bio no, it's more. It's <gasps> four years at five point seven five. No, yeah. this oh, year, next year, God. year after that, and year after that, five point seven. And he's under. He's an under nine hundred goaltender. He's barely a. He's not barely a backup. Yo, that's no? that's where you 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 pull some Nikita Kucherov, Tampa Bay Lightning stuff, and be like, he'll be back for the playoffs. Oh shoot, he won't be. Like you are Robidaw Island, Martin Jones for four years. There's no way. 
Yeah, so that's a that's a troubling situation because you need to get rid of five point seven five and your goalie. That's when you hire hire Lou Lamorello and you have Lou have a discussion with him. <laughs> Put a horse head in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I like how we just talk about Lou Lamorello. Like, hey, like what if uh, what if things from mob movies happened? <laughs> <laughs> but like we're all pretty sure that they did i yeah. do miss i do miss that about lou in toronto is that yeah. there's this um there's this stuff that you're like wow that's almost cheating and they're like and they just kind of stare at you if lou uh, was still here nylander would either not be a leaf or would have been signed through that beginning portion of the season he'd be gone it wouldn't have be been gone. the situation that dubas let happen which no better or for worse we'll see it we saw how it played out but That's it right. would have been different if lou was in charge yes we also would still have nikita zaitsev and he'd be in year three <laughs> so and matt martin i so i bought out matt uh, martin jones contract on cap friendly okay mm-hmm. the buyout cap hit is pretty stomachable actually okay it's 1.9 next year 2.4 2.9 then 1.6 1.6 1.6 do it budget for that do it but the actual money you're giving him is 10 million dollars and that's just such a hard sell right now hey Uh, i want to pay 10 million dollars for this guy to not play for us anymore. It's a lot. Shoo. But That's, is it better than, what is it? He's going to make 25 over the next f- four years? Uh, against the cap. I don't know about actual dollars. Yeah. It'll be somewhere uh, in around that number. The bio cost is two thirds. So I'm good at math. I don't know. 15. Mm. He's owed 15. So, hey, maybe that's how you sell it. Hey, listen, not only will we have better goaltending, but we'll save $5 million. But don't we have to get a goalie to replace him? Ah, you're getting lost in the details. Like, ah, boy, boy. Oh, boy. That's a, that's an extraordinarily not good contract. Mm -hmm. It's pretty bad. Man, they made it to the conference final with that. Pretty darn bad. Him and Dell. Aaron Dell played playoff games, Mm -hmm. started, started playoff games for them because they thought it was the best idea. That's woof. My God. Wow. Hey, um, I just want to say a little shout out to the Islanders who have faced some serious adversary and are surging right now. I've heard it from Islanders fans in my DMS as I always do. I don't know where you guys were when you guys weren't doing well, but you know, whatever. Uh, and it's, it's pretty crazy that like before the game yesterday, they lose two players, one of whom is JG Pajot, who is like a very important player on their team. And they go out and they're like, no, we're going to win anyway. It's cool. Who are they playing? I forget. New Jersey. Oh, okay. Well, it's uh, a, well the East. Uh, no, it's a situation <laughs> where <laughs> easy division. You have to beat the teams that are in front of you and nine games in a row. They took care of business. They swept Buffalo. They swept New Jersey and then they just keep winning. And Varlamov has been everything you could ask for and more and up and down the lineup. They play such a structured hockey that it's whoever's out on the ice. Like, as you saw yesterday when two guys are just out of the lineup five minutes before game time and they still go out and win because it doesn't feel, really matter because the hockey they play is so structured and it's, it's awesome to watch. Let's say the Islanders are playing above what they actually are, right? Like, let's, sure. oh, let's just assume. They're 9-0 nine, nine and oh in their last nine. So above that's what, 7-2? and two? <laughs> but no, let's say they're or not the that. best team in the division, right? Sure, but sure, sure. I mean, you get a bunch of games against Buffalo and New Jersey and you just wreck shop. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me the hot start to the Canadian season, even though it's worn off. You can't tell me that hasn't had a permanent effect on the rest of the season. Because for the rest of the season, that team is going to believe in their heads that they're closer to that. Mm. than they are the losing team. Well, except for they played the Canucks and then they played the Canucks and then they played the Canucks and they played the Canucks. Yeah, but they're going to go into games after winning. They're going to go into games expecting to win. And the one thing about the Montreal Canadiens is you can tell the losing has really affected them because they expect to win. The Mm -hmm. standard they set for themselves at the beginning of the season. One thing I got to say about this Leafs group is I bet they're a lot more pissed off about losing than they have been in recent years because the expectation is to win. And they know they can. That's the yeah. thing. Montreal didn't know. They were like, well, maybe. The Leafs know. They can. They could and have. The Islanders know. 
They're going to head into every game against the Penguins, the Flyers, the Capitals, the Bruins. They're going to head into all those games saying, it's your job to beat us. We can do it. We are the team to beat. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of faith in the Islanders going into the playoffs. I was impressed with the bubble, and then now they pulled off this little streak. I think they're right now, when I'm putting together my bracket, they're right at the top of the list. Perennial second round team. Barry, a Barry Trot special. Yeah. What is they, made the third, a... they made the third in the bubble. Yeah, what Adam, I'd kill. I'd kill no, no, that. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Dude, <laughs> oh, oh. we're Leaf fans. You know, I would throw a parade if we got to the second round. Are you kidding me? I would love you, that. You mean they're money in the bank to make the second money round? Money in least. the bank. Oh, okay, that was a compliment. Okay, okay. I thought you were dissing them. No. Yeah, I was confused, man. Can't okay. make it out of the second round. Who is yeah. dissing anyone for only making the second round? Only the Capitals were crazy enough to go, well, listen, if we don't make it past the second round this year with Barry Trotz, we're going to let him go. Oh, we won the cup. We're still going to let him go. Like, it's it's yeah. Barry Objectively Trotz, a mistake. Obje- objectively. They've never been the same. A mistake. Same. A mistake. Yeah. Um, never. And it's like, well, we don't want to pay him $4 million. Uh, well, okay. You won the Stanley Cup. You won the Cup. <laughs> so I know. Are you nuts? Like, the same crazy. thing with Quinville. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, keep him happy. Why? I know. Look why at what the are Florida Panthers have done. Why are humans? I, I don't. Big ego, man. You I can't talk Joel, about that Joel Quinville what he wants. Florida's been great this year. They've been amazing. Yeah. I, I wonder why. Yeah, it's almost like it's it, it's almost like they've got a great coach and great players who were not well coached. The answer, by the way, is uh, they have a goalie. <laughs> no, well, but you show me a great goalie, coach something along those lines. Yeah, but there are some coaches where you're like, like look at look at what Barry Trotz was handed his first year with the Islanders. Nobody thought Robin Lander was going to turn it around like that. Nobody. No. Nobody. No. And they no. came out and they played a defensively smothering style of hockey that's death to watch. And the and and Robin Leonard, you know, wins the Masterton and is a Vesna. I think he was a runner up and was Finalist. incredible. Had he, he played a, more, he would have won it. hundred percent. But and 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 he he revitalized his career. He had a good run in Chicago. Chicago was like, fuck that, we don't want to be successful. Ship him to Vegas. <laughs> and then uh <laughs> ship him to Toronto V <laughs> V yeah. Forgot yeah. about that. He in was Toronto. a leaf for a hot minute. Um, and uh, no, and also Buffalo or sorry, Chicago is doing pretty well this year. But the, the point I'm trying to make here is that like Barry Trotz, the, the expectations could not have been high on the, on the Island after Tavares left and they were left with, okay, well, what do we got? And I think it's pretty, pretty amazing as a coach. You, they say like, how much is a different, how much of a difference does a coach really make? Well, I think you're seeing it. Good ones. I th- I think you see it with Quinville difference. and Trotz. And I think you see it with that goaltending coach. Uh, in uh, the in the island, who is what is his name? Oh, I forget. He is um, a Steve. magic worker. That I guy. think it's Steve. Boys, it? I have to pee in the next thirty seconds. Mm. <laughs> I will be right. Back. Are you going to do it on camera? With the NBA season in full swing, baseball underway, and the NCAA tourney and the Masters right around the corner, the sports calendar is officially heating up. And that means now is the perfect time to take your sports fan couch experience to the next level by getting in on the action yourself. The Athletic has partnered with BetMGM, the king of sports books, to bring you the latest odds and exclusive offers to bring you closer to the game than ever. Subscribers to The Athletic get an in-depth analysis from our newsroom, plus insights into the latest betting trends and odds from BetMGM's team of experts, getting you the context that you need before you nail that pick or parlay. Right now, BetMGM is offering Steve Dangle Podcast listeners a risk-free first bet up to $600. You just sign up at BetMGM.com and use the bonus code 2POD. T-W-O-P-O-D, to take advantage of this special offer from the king of sportsbooks. This offer is for new customers. That's a risk-free bet up to $600 at betmgm.com with the bonus code 2POD, T-W-O-P-O-D. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. Cue the disclaimer. Must be 21 years of age or older to wager. Colorado, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia only. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Nevada, and Virginia. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. 1-800-GAMBLER in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. And 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. In Tennessee, call or text the red line at 800-889-9789. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. Promotional offer not available in Nevada. Steve has now used the bathroom. Total relief. Let's do the press conference. Jesse, 
Uh, that's what happens when you chug a giant gallon of water. Yeah, he's, yeah, I drink one of these every day. CrossFit for life. I'm not even where I should be. Oh, yeah, me, the picture of CrossFit for sure. Well, you're not injured yet. That's when you'd be the picture of CrossFit. If, it, it, I'm just always injured. I just, what <laughs> if you're you just always back. uncomfortable? Maybe you are the picture of CrossFit, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I wake up in the morning and I'm like, ah, oh, I can't do the things I used to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesse, first question. Uh, first question comes from Vijay. Hello, uh, Vijay. Or they VJ? want an, a VJ? I don't mm-hmm. know. Oh, VJ. Uh, VJ? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, we went to school with a VJ. Yes. No. Oh, awesome. How do you spell the name? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Let's V-I-J-A-I. just go to the question. V-I-J-A-I. VJ. Okay. That's all right. Awesome. What I would say. That's all right. It's probably wrong. Right. I don't know. Can I ask the question? Please. Oh, sorry. The VJ. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? What? Why not? <laughs> Who comes Era. out? Of, <laughs> who comes out of the lineup when Simmons is back? Uh, Travis Boyd, uh, easily Travis Boyd. Um, yeah, you know what was so killer for the Leafs for so long is that fourth line was just murderous, and Travis Boyd was a part of that. And Boy, is he uh, like we're talking about guys who aren't doing a very good job right now. Like every shift, it's like he's going, Oh, yeah, definitely don't play me anymore. <laughs> like the, the standard he set for himself. Is high. Mean. <laughs> I don't care. The standard Be nice he set to for Travis. himself. Standard he set for himself is very high. And the standard for the leash this year is very high. Uh, there, there, there are certain very players. Good. There are certain players, Steve. And to your point, that are like good five. If you need them for five games, and then 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 you don't want to see him for another ten, and then you need him for a five game. Hey, he fits. He fits great. If we played him for eighty two, though, that might be a problem. Travis Boyd would be super duper handy in the playoffs, for sure. Sure, um, but um, for the longest time at the beginning of the season, it was uh, whoever plays the best is going to be on the fourth line tonight. And he won. Uh, I think it needs to be up for discussion again. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like he, for a while, was playing in a way where you would never, why on earth would you take him out? Why mm-hmm. would you take him out? He's playing well. And he hasn't been recently. So, you know, I, Sheldon Keefe said something that's not getting nearly enough traction in this market today where he was talking about the restrictions on the Leafs due to the cap. Hmm. Did you read Which, the actual quote? What is the actual quote? It says, fuck them kids. Whoa. Oops. I can't believe he said that. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. crazy. Sheldon Keefe, head coach yeah. of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Direct quote. Yeah. Michael Jordan. He scored. He scored at the camp. <laughs> he made all the shots. <laughs> made, all, made all of them. That is the best story in pro sports, by the way. <laughs> the That's Michael not real. <laughs> is it a real story? I don't it's know. a rumor. It's a rumor. It's <laughs> yeah. basically like he goes head to head with a bunch of kids at a summer camp and destroys them. No, uh, it was if if he makes these three, if he misses any of these shots, these kids get a bunch of money. And then he made all three shots. <laughs> and then they asked him, hey, Michael, why'd you make all the shots at the camp? And he said, fuck them kids. <laughs> 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 anyways just, I every one of those kids he saw like scott burrell and he's just like i'm going to bully them i took this person documented <laughs> so steve there's Poor the scott burrell, right <laughs> <laughs> he every clip is shitting on that guy and i'm like that is his teammate you know no scott, his opponent didn't tried. stand a chance <laughs> like what the fuck Oh my God. Oh man. He's just not nice. They really glossed over like, yeah, he punched Steve Kerr in the face. <laughs> like they really, yeah, that just... Scott Burrell never showed up to practice. I bullied him. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> he, uh, you know, I really made that guy hate his life. <laughs> like, but anyway, we won. and we won. Doesn't matter. Who cares? One. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Like so he... Keith said, fuck them kids. At the anyway, anyway. Well, what were we, huh? What was that? <laughs> the next question, Adam, did you want to Before do a quick Adam's history corner uh, mm-hmm. from Mike Schmidt? What's the question? Friend of the show. Yes. Big, good friend of the show. Uh, the Mike Schmidt. So mm-hmm. TMS. Uh, TMS. Absolutely. TMS. Uh, for Adam's history corner, which historical figures from different eras? What? From different eras. Eras. Would you like to see fight each other? 
either one-on-one -on -one or all-out war. So mm. you can do a one-on-one -on -one combat battle or you bring their armies and you face. What are you doing? Which figures? Go ahead, Adam. Uh, well, I wouldn't do one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I, cause I, <laughs> I'd actually like to see, uh, Winston Churchill and, uh, the guy that, uh, preceded him as president or probably prime minister of England, Neville Chamberlain go into a fight because they were in the same party and they absolutely could not stand each other. But no, actually, I think, I think if you're going to, if you're going to see something cool, which isn't really cool, I guess it's, you know, when there's a thousand years that passes between you and a ton of death, it becomes a statistic. None of this is, cool. is real. I don't know. Dude, no, it's history. I don't. It's a video <laughs> but, game. But if you're going to video game it, I want to see, um, I want to see Julius Caesar and his army fresh back from Gaul versus uh, Chinggis Khan, Khan and the Mongols. And uh, by the way, the Mongols are going to win. Uh, the Mongols are from for any like for, when you talk about being ahead of their time, they are the Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan of armies. They are so far ahead of their time uh, when they started to conquer the world and they're you know like so there's um there's accounts from romans who fought um who fought the parthians who were sort of a horse archer type of people and they were known for charging you firing a shot and then leaving the battlefield like oh we're scared and then a whole bunch of people like running after them and then they would turn around on their horse mid shot mid ride and shoot and they were able to shoot when the horse's hooves were up in the air. Cause you know how horses, when they actually run, all four hooves will be up in the air. They were able to time their shots and they could get between eight and 10 a minute from behind hitting people as you, as you pursued them. And then they would, you would pursue them into a trap. They would overwhelm you and be done. And Romans lost entire legions to these people. Um, and it's funny because the, it, throughout warfare, the, you know, an army in the pre- like pre-Empire Rome, so like the, the fall of the Republic just before, could probably dominate any army in Europe right up until the invention of gunpowder and maybe a little bit afterwards. So we're talking about an army that was so good in, in, in Rome at like 200 BCE could still take on an army in the 1500s and probably wipe them out, no problem. More people, better organization, better tactics, incredible generalship, um, way, way, way better. But the Mongols were so good uh, because they were mobile at a time when people weren't really that mobile. And they were known for their bow being so strong that if you held a shield up to block it, guys used to, the armies used to call it being stapled to your shield. The arrow would go through the shield, go through your arm, and you'd be stuck to your shield. And when the Romans took on the Parthians, not only did they get stapled to their shields and they'd have to pull it out along with whatever was on their, in their arm, They'd also get stapled to the ground. And so they, the, 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 the amount of arrow fire would actually, they, they literally could not move. There'd be arrows through their feet stuck to the ground. And there was an army by, I think it was uh, Crassus, uh, who was one of the guys right around the time Caesar took over, who was the, known as the richest man in Rome, went and invaded Parthia, lost, died along with his son. Um, and there was a couple of Roman legions that were, uh, that were left behind in Parthia, which is like Asia, East Asia. And they ended up in China. And they actually, um, they actually, there are Chinese written records about a couple of organizations of, of, of troops that fought in a fish scale pattern, which is like the Roman, the, uh, the Roman sort of pattern. And they talk about this because once they were captured, they moved them over to the border with China where the Parthians and Chinese were fighting. And that's where they got to know each other. And there is apparently DNA that they can trace all the way back. So that's pretty cool. But I'd like to see probably the best Roman army there ever was versus the best army there ever was. And I would just like to see how long the Romans last because the Mongols beat everybody basically hands down right up until gunpowder. And if you, it's a shame uh, because of our Eurocentric view of history, how little uh, the Mongols actually get in terms of credit for, there's so many things that they should get credit for, but there's also so many things that they were responsible for. If you ask a Chinese person how they feel about Mongols, they'll say, well, they're responsible for multiple genocides and wiping out our culture for uh, generations. And that's true. Uh, and then you talk to somebody with like a Eurocentric view and they'd be like, well, you know what the Mongols did do, right? If you ignore all the genocide, they were super good at opening up trade, line, trade routes. 
like crazy good at that. So, you know, it's sort of one of those things where if you look at history, it's such a bizarre question. Who do you want to see go to war? Uh, nobody is the answer. But if I were to, if you were to say like, here's a title match, those would be the two armies that I'd, I think would be very interesting. And my money every day, all the time is on the Mongols. So that's just me. So to, to your point, Adam, the, you, you take, I think you take courses because you want to learn more generally. Mm-hmm. Like for me, like with history, I was like, I'm interested in World War II. I feel like I know some things about it. I want to learn more. Mm-hmm. So I took a course in university so I could learn more. And it's, it begins with Japan. And yes. it goes, in order to understand what happens in Japan during this time period, we have to go back 50 years. Mm-hmm. And it was just two classes worth of things I had no basis in. Had never heard before. Didn't have anything to compare it to. The rising sun. Nothing rang a bell. Like I, it's that's how Eurocentric it is. You, you start talking about Austria and Germany and England, and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. I learned about little bits and pieces of that. Oh, I didn't know that. Japan, I was like, I have, I have nothing. Yeah. Just one day they in the, in the high school history is one day they showed up and they were bad. That's and it. A few years later, they went to America and they went. By the way. You haven't acknowledged how bad we are. So uh, here's us being bad. <laughs> and then the bombs happen. Then there's like decades of no information. And then Mario shows up. Like it's there's yeah. it's yeah, it's extremely Eurocentric. They don't tell us anything. And you have to understand, you know, Japan would have was on one side at World War One and on the other side in World War Two. And you have to understand that why that happened, uh, why a, con- a, com- a country that was literally medieval. Literally medieval until the 1850s. Literally did not shoot guns, didn't have them, and did not believe in allowing foreign visitors. They had one port, and the Dutch were allowed to trade at it, and that was it in the entire country until the Americans forced their way in and said, no, we're doing this. Um, they were literally medieval, and by the time World War I comes around, they are a world power. 70 years. Incredible. It's an incredible run for a country with no natural resources, and, and yet it caused a whole lot of sh- terrible awful things it's 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 just an unbelievable story and when you get far enough away from history the deaths start to just kind of fade into the background but we shouldn't forget them ever right i mean the whole point of history is you learn from it (laughs) bingo anyway sorry it's the whole too long yeah i think we're uh congratulations to liam who won our instagram contest for the dangle navy uh bomber jacket Mm-hmm. It's being sent out today. Hey. Liam, congratulations. We had a lot of entries. Everybody uh, submitted the secret phrase correctly. So some people did uh, spell some things incorrectly. So you weren't qualified. But yeah, Liam won Stingy. that. Congratulations to him. We'll have another contest maybe this week on Thursday's yeah. episode going into the weekend. Maybe we'll give away something else. Maybe Let's a hoodie. Do I don't know. So we'll see. Maybe. Listen to Thursday's episode to find out. What if we kissed at the end what of the con- contest? What if we gave away some merch? Yeah. <laughs> all right so with that awkward ending that will only make sense if you're watching this please right. uh subscribe like love and be back for thursday because we're gonna have another show for you then until then love you. the steve dangle podcast follow the guys on twitter at steve underscore dangle at adam w-y-l-d-e and at jesse blake connection complete